If you have questions, we have answers. Join us live every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for Talking RV Tech, presented by RVTravel.com. Here's a sample from one of our recent shows. Okay, our Sumo Springs, all they are cracked up to be. I see Winnebago's now offer the, offering them as an option. Winnebago's offering them at, on the motorized or on the travel trailers? I think both. Okay. That surprises me because Winnebago has really never been a big aftermarket. Uh, so I know uh, the president of Sumo Spring was really going after the manufacturers. Okay. It's made a huge difference. I mean, we, we yeah. put them on all the time on pickup trucks, travel trailers, and motorized units. Yeah, we, we install them way more on pickup trucks and motorized units than we do travel trailers. The travel trailer version of it is relatively newer compared to the other stuff. Um, I don't think I've ever had a customer come back and be like, that wasn't worth the money. No, they're... they're well, we did, you know, we, had, we have Carol uh, that is our resident uh, veterinarian and cat lady, and she bought a Ford F-350 on a Newmar out in North Carolina, I believe, or something like that. And then mm -hmm. she moved out to Palm Springs and she was scared to death of that ride. She thought she was going to die. It was, of course, you know, it's a 39 foot Newmar on an F-53 gas chassis. And it's, yeah. Big, you know, I mean, that is an elephant on roller skates to start with. And yeah. so she went out and, and researched and, you know, she looked at liquid springs, but you know, it's really $20,000 $20, or more. Uh, and she ended up putting sumo springs and I don't know, she had a, quite a list of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I remember, I don't remember oh, it was track, track, two track or what. She was, she was not satisfied with it. Yeah. But. You know, there, there are, and one of the things too, is I told her go weigh the coach and she was just absolutely shocked at how much it weighed. So she took a whole bunch of stuff out of it, trying yeah. to lighten it up. But I, you know, I, I, I personally think that when you start getting into units that are over 35 feet long, maybe even 34 feet long, that gas chassis is just, you know, it, it's, it's on the edge. Yeah. And some people love it. I, this guy that I'm working on is Thor out here. He's got a 37 foot Thor triple slide or maybe quad slide and it's actually 38 feet like we call it it's a 37 foot model but it's 37 feet 24 inches which <laughs> so, but he doesn't mind and, and you know i i drove it back up from you know about a two hour drive and it's, it's like wow this thing is this you gotta you gotta drive it i mean you really have to pay pay attention and he said you know what I'm not doing that 3,000 mile glory trip. I'm not going to Alaska. I'm just locally, and I'm not. I'm not going to spend another 70 grand for diesel. Like, and that's that's something too. A lot of people when they buy these units, especially ones who, you know, hey, I've had this small unit or a trailer or something, then they go and they buy this giant unit. They expect it to drive like a car, or hey, it doesn't drive like my old unit used to, or something. Yeah. And then they they run into a situation like. Join us live this coming Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're talking RV Tech. You can join us on any of the YouTube or Facebook destinations linked below. We hope to see you there.